Well, we're up at 5.30. It's now 6.30. We have one thing to do today, and that, uh, how do you say it in Spanish? Um, uh, fibre amarillo, injection. Ow! <laughs> Check out that sunrise. The deal is yellow fever is required if you have been in Panama to enter many other countries. So we have to get our yellow fever before we leave Panama because there's a chance we could get to Ecuador or we could get to French Polynesia and they could say, oh, no yellow fever vaccine, no, we're not letting you in. And that would really suck. So we are on a mission to make that one thing happen today so that we can vomit Adios, 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 adios. Adios. It doesn't look too bad. It's definitely less than 50 people, so if they give out 400 shots a day, we should be okay. Oh, by the way, this is our fourth time here. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. Adios. Adios. Ciao. Ciao. Never a dull moment in Panama. Okay, it is now 8, Jason, 8.30. 8.30. They open at 7.30, so we were in line and ready to go. But of course, we got to the cashier who said because we don't have proof of travel that we are going to a country that requires yellow fever, we needed to go speak to the nurse over here. Spoke to the nurse and she said, nope, you're going to have to go to this building over here because you need to see the doctor. To get the doctor to write you a note saying that you indeed do need the vaccine. So, now we actually have our numbers and our little tickets so we can go get our vaccine. Okay. Oh. Thank you. All done. That was not terribly painful by any stretch. And we have our little yellow fever passport. So now we are good to go. For 10 years. For 10 years, I think. I don't know. Mm -hmm. If you're wondering why we didn't do it in the States, well, it would have cost about $500 for us to get the yellow injection, fever. yellow fever injection, and um, make an appointment, get looked at by a doctor. So we decided to hold off here until we got here, and it cost us $10. Well, which, $5 per person. Yeah, $5 per person, but it took us uh, four days, four yeah. visits. But that was just happenstance. Yeah. Like we just, you know, sometimes. Yeah. la vie. Okay, to the bus. Yeah. Adios. Adios. <laughs> they all say ciao. The next step of leaving Panama is planning and we are just deep, deep in it. <laughs> <laughs> We've been at it for a few weeks now, but as the time is drawing near, we are I guess hardcore diving honing into in, it. Yeah, really honing into what. We've kind of tossed around the idea of going to Costa Rica and other places, but we finally officially decided a couple days ago. Ecuador. Ecuador. Is our next yeah. destination. And why Ecuador? It's supposed to be cheap or inexpensive from what we've heard. A lot of cruisers love it and it sets us up perfectly for Galapagos. Galapagos. Which would be the next destination. Okay, so I guess the big question is... Why are we leaving? Well, we have to leave Panama because our visas are about to expire. And two... We're ready to go. We're ready to go. Yeah. And we can't... Sure. And we can't just bolt right to Galapagos, right? Oh, I suppose yeah. we could. Um, and then French Polynesia. There is a time for everything when it comes to sailing. Everything is dictated by the weather. And certainly, this passage is. The saying says you can choose a time or you can choose a place, but you cannot choose both when you're sailing. Uh, and here's this. A large area of the South Pacific is affected by cyclones between December and May, okay? The most dangerous months are January to March. <laughs> the goal would be to wait till about like, what? First week April, of April-ish, yeah. right? So we'll shoot for that time frame. Until then, we have some time to kill. So that's what we've been planning for, and we are using Cornell's Ocean Atlas, mm -hmm. and this is like a broad picture on historical wind patterns based on certain months, uh, trade winds, so we kind of have an idea of what our general winds may or may not be. It's kind of just a, 
Okay. Just historical, yeah. yeah. And then for the route itself, and just an overview of that, we are using World Cruising Routes, also by Jimmy Cornell. These are both like super big picture. Yeah, broad overviews. And then as far as for now, um, of course, we're looking at our charts, our chart plotter. Um, we use iNavix and Garmin, so that way we have two different charts to, to double check everything. Active captain. And even though we're several days away from leaving, we're just kind of generally doing our, our route planning on predict wind, just to kind of have an idea of where the wind's coming from how long will it take us to get there and it's just refreshing every six or twelve hours oh and the sail is going to be um just a hair over 700 nautical miles unless we really screw something up and make it a lot longer because <laughs> we have to tag a lot <laughs> and but, then yeah so. um other things we have to think about cdc uh website health website cats uh yep looking at the pet health information and what's required for entering the country customs Customs for us, what's required from us, and uh, check-in so, procedures. Yeah. yeah, checking out here, we have mm -hmm. to check out here a certain way. So anyway, it's just so different than our old life in the RV. We used to just bring up the jacks, bring in the slides, and just point the RV and go, like without a care. Planning a simple A to B destination is never a simple A to B destination with sailing, but it's because the act of getting there, the sail itself, all that time in between is a huge part of the journey. That is an adventure in itself so it's the mode of travel and that's how we do it and that's we'll probably show this again uh, in future sales but uh, yeah it's fun it's a lot of work it takes a lot of time but it's fun <laughs> <laughs> didn't we choose fun it's fun but it's work <laughs> oh yeah so anyway back to the computer and filling out paperwork good i'll get on the coffee right yeah, yeah. Iced. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not hot. We're doing a big provision run. We're at this place. It's kind of like Costco. It's a uh, friend let us borrow his car, which is cool massive amount of selection of stuff. Thought I lost you. <laughs> Still here. Non-GMO tomatoes. Turtle be in. Thud. This is our favorite cab driver, Mario. Take care of my family, take care of us. Gracias. Nothing like a wheelbarrow full of provisions at low tide. Yeah, I definitely need your help with this one. You're gonna put the camera down. Okay. <laughs> one thing that I've been regretting, no, that I've been anticipating <laughs> is running out of the cat food that the cats like. I know it doesn't seem like a big problem, but they've been eating the same food for like eight years, 10 years. So I've just got one bag of the good stuff left and now I'm trying to integrate the healthiest food I can find so it doesn't hurt their stomachs. And I know we're not gonna find their good food in Ecuador, in French Polynesia. Canned goods save your life when you've run out of everything else. Same goes for cat litter. I've used World's Best for like 10 years. Now I'm using this. Whatever I can get. Es todo. Es todo. I got food all the way. Welcome aboard, Kate! Everything else. Hi! Yes! Hello! Hello! <laughs> Meet our newest crew member! Woohoo! Hi, guys! <laughs> you may remember her from such adventures as River Fun in San Blas. What else have we done with you? Um, New Year's. New Year's. Uh, uh, totally photo bombing us. Oh, yeah. For uh, <laughs> Linton Bay Chain, yeah, right. chain video. <laughs> so, yeah, more on that story later. Yes. We're going to get settled in. You didn't bring very much, Kate. I'm kind of disappointed. I'm a 
I'm a professional traveler. I pack light. <laughs> I've got this down to an art, man. <laughs> <laughs> and what would we say to that in South African? Uh, nice. Nice. Nigga, don't be in. <laughs> shopping so now it's time to load up on fruits and vegetables and supposedly no, but hay que llevar porque allá hay que llevarle lo de de mejor bueno bueno and potatoes and onions all last really well so I know that I can have cabbage for easily a month. Always a very good thing to have on Passover. Yeah. No más plástico. No más plástico. No. Bad for la mer. Bad for la mer. <laughs> How much did all that citrus cost you? I don't know, you paid for it. Oh, three dollars. How much did all of it cost us? Three dollars! <laughs> Four pounds of little bananas. The most, the most sweet, most sueño dulce uh, manzanas. Uh huh. And, and you're gonna put that whole thing on our boat? Yeah. We're not gonna catch a single fish. <laughs> Oh. Do, you, do you approve of this? <laughs> Are we going to French Polynesia or are we just going to Ecuador? That's like a month. It's like a month, years worth. Mario. Very good. Tineo <laughs> manzano. That is a trunk full of vegetables right there and fruit. What the? Yeah. Mario, where are we? What's it called? Our nombre de Mercado? Mercado de Abasto. Mercado de Abasto. This is the place to stock up on all fresh food. It's all local farmers from different areas bring all their food down to this massive area. And everything is just so much better, so much better than the grocery store. Yep. See, see, we probably spent $100. And look at all that. It's just gorgeous. You probably can't see it because it's okay. No. I think we're ready, let's go. Alright, so here's the scoop. You can bring your boat here to the dock at La Playita and fuel up, but if you use under 100 gallons or maybe 200 gallons, they charge you a $35 fee to use the dock to fuel up. But you can bring your jerry cans for free, so that's what we're doing. And we have to bring them up the ramp, so thank goodness it's not low tide, uh, because that would be a pain in the butt. <laughs> uh, because of uh, fuel regulations, you can't be on the dock and fuel up. Jason went to go check us out of Panama, pick up our Zarpe for Ecuador. And Kate and I are getting the boat ready. Looks like we've got a little bit of a breeze this morning, so hopefully we will get to sail. Okay, that's good. And then I'm off to move the traveler over. <laughs> Jason and his banana tree. Are 
we good to go? No, we are not. No. Yeah, we all have to go to the mall. What? Apparently, no. Apparently, when we checked in at Boca del Toro, they didn't give us a visa. They only stamped our passport. Like, and didn't give us an official visa. Oh, no. You're so, kidding me. Uh, we have a Zarpe. We're supposed to leave within 48 hours, but immigration won't let us go. Oh, man. This video is never going to end. No. Phone documents. Should be it. All right, let's hope. Final step of leaving Panama. <laughs> Hopefully. Take 25. Lots of <laughs> Nothing's ever easy around here. We have to go get passport photos and fill up paperwork and make copies of other paperwork because everything we have is of course not sufficient. So we need more. And it's going to cost us $105 per person. We had to get photos here. But there are... Machine is broken. Machine is broken. So now we have to go back over to the mall see if we can find somewhere else to get them printed done. Anyway, fun day! Yay! It is now 12.45. Yeah, lunchtime. Hopefully we can get this done today. Who knows? We'll be able to leave. Ay, ay, ay. Tamales. Got tamales. tamales. <laughs> Lunch. And you want to see? How bad is it? <laughs> Pretty bad. That's okay. Uh, Are they the right size? Yeah. Ah, I love all this. Hopefully this is it. Official. 110 bucks a person to check out. Apparently when we got the Bocas del Toro they didn't give us a proper Visa form, entry, whatever. Yeah, it's $105. $105 per person, there you go. And about $25 back and forth in taxes. $10 in copies, $10 in photos. But now we get to go. Yay! Yay! Okay, back to the boat. <laughs> Are we ready to go? Ready. Vamos! See, see. Singer, yep. you ready to leave Panama? Yes. Very much so. <laughs> He's and he wants shade. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Is it hot, Singa? <laughs> oh, poor kitty. we continue on to Ecuador because well we have like grandfather time's beard probably growing on our hull so we have some serious bottom cleaning to do so we can actually have some speed to get to Ecuador but adventures Boogie. ahead It's a 38 foot motorhome. Yeah, steel motorhome. I've been working, uh, running boats with my husband for the last couple of years, and uh, yeah, we decided to resign and hopefully uh, finish our circumnavigation. So 
while Rufus hands over the boat for the next two months with a new crew. Um, I'm here lounging on Curiosity with the winds. <laughs> <laughs> Told you, yeah, because we, we haven't put you to work at all yet, right? No, it's been a holiday. <laughs> Uh, oh, welcome to the crew. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Okay, back to sunset gazing. Cool. Sunset is about to happen off in the distance there. And the very, very soothing sound of downwind sailing. Thanks so much for watching this video. I know it was probably a long one. It felt really long trying to get out of Panama. But anyway, thank you for watching. Make sure and give this video a thumbs up. Leave us a comment down below. And if you have not already hit that subscribe button, please do so. It helps us out tremendously. See you next time. Bye. Or I like the Panama.